you just build on that, you know, California now has administered 48 million doses of vaccine. That's 18 million more than the next highest state, the state of Texas. And we're very proud of that. And we're very proud of the efforts here in Alameda County and Oakland. And I'm very grateful to be joined by the supervisor, by the mayor, and of course, the extraordinary work that is being done on the ground where not just the state vision is realized, but our national vision is realized. Uh, Jane and her remarkable team including all the remarkable volunteers you see behind me. Well, we still have work to do, but this is a momentous occasion to be able to announce at a statewide level, a state of 40 million people, the state that has a population the size of 21 state populations combined, that we have uh, broken now 80% of all eligible Californians having received at least one dose. That's top 10 in the United States. Uh, that's tremendous progress, but you can hear, as you heard from the mayor and the supervisor, uh, that they've done even better here at the local level. But nonetheless, the state of California now has passed that threshold. 80% of all eligible Californians, 12 and older, have received at least one dose. Uh, we continue uh, to be mindful of our responsibility to do more and do better, particularly for diverse communities. The supervisor was saying we still have work to do in the Latino community, the African American community and what we refer to in California as the Healthy Places Index Quartile 1. You'll have to look that up, but it's a long way of saying this. We have broken out in very detailed terms census tracts in this state and really focused in our efforts at communities that have been underrepresented and underserved in terms of our vaccine efforts to make sure we're accountable and to make sure we're targeting our outreach efforts and vaccination efforts in those communities. I should note, as BART passes, that we're also passing a number of other important milestones. Uh, the state of California uh, now, over the last two weeks, has seen uh, an average over 600,000 doses of vaccine administered uh, for five straight weeks, over 500,000. Put that in perspective, as of this week, we're 44 percent higher in our vaccine uh, doses being administered than we were the week after the 4th of July holiday weekend. So we're seeing progress. We're seeing incremental increase in total number of vaccine doses. But again, 80 percent is not where we need to go. We still need to reach out to those that are on the fence, including many of the folks you see behind me here today that are in this fenced area in a secure and safe environment, getting a life-saving vaccine. It is not too late. I want to encourage everybody that hasn't been vaccinated to avail themselves to these life-saving uh, vaccines that are not only effective, uh, but are truly the answer to how we get this pandemic once and for all behind us. As the mayor said, this is still primarily, overwhelmingly, a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Uh, we have work to do to deal with the misinformation and the intentional disinformation uh, that still remains out there. The state is not being passive in that effort. Our vaccinate for all, our vaccinate all 58 counties. Uh, we actually have a team of people working day in and day out and battling against that misinformation and notably that disinformation, particularly on social media. Uh, we continue, again, our efforts to work with community-based organizations, to work with clinics like this, uh, 480 partners in all in the state of California, $127.7 million commitment to do more door knocking, as Jane was saying, and the supervisor and the mayor were alluding to, uh, to do more culturally competent outreach, uh, to meet people quite literally where they are. Pop-up sites like this, mobile sites all throughout the state of California, barber shops, church-based partnerships, uh, all across the spectrum, doing more to try to do better, including in our rural parts and remote parts of the state, uh, where we still have a substantial uh, amount of population that need to get these life-saving vaccines. I'm encouraged uh, people are back in school. Our kids are back in school, including at least half of my kids uh, back in school this morning, uh, where I got to drop them off. It was wonderful to see our kids wearing uh, masks. It was wonderful to see uh, the efforts supported by all the parents, at least I came across, and by all of the staff. We're very proud in closing that the state of California asserted itself as the first state in this country to require all state employees to have state verification and or testing 
requirements, the first state in the country to require all health care workers to have a mandate for vaccinations. We are proud of the fact we were the first state in this country to require all school employees, not just teachers, but all the paraprofessionals, bus drivers, custodial staff uh, to be vaccinated and or be tested in the first state to update our guidelines as it relates to large scale outdoor events uh, with some additional requirements. We'll remain vigilant, uh, but also sober to the challenges and realities of the 1,050 school districts up and down the state of California, different rules and regulations, uh, but enforcement that uh, we believe uh, will be enacted at the local level uh, and a strike team to encourage and support with technical assistance our efforts to not only identify before children come into school uh, whether or not uh, they are positive, but to provide supports if indeed they need to be isolated or quarantined so we can continue to keep our schools open. I'll end by reminding you of a couple of important points. We have a 4.6% positivity rate in the state of California. That's the seventh lowest positivity rate in America. That's because we're leading with science. We're open to argument, interested in evidence. Uh, we are not being ideological about this pandemic in any way, shape, or form. That 4.6%, let me put that in perspective. Florida today is at 18.7%. Texas at 16%. We have a case rate in California. That's a fifth of the state of Texas. I want to remind people, or rather the state of Florida, I want to remind people that we have the power of choice in California to walk down a path where we are ideological and political about our approach to keep people health, healthy or safe or continuing down the path that we're on here in the state of California that is proving itself. We're seeing a plateauing in hospitalizations. We're seeing a modest increase now, not a large increase in ICUs. Uh, and we have seen that positivity rate drop from 7.1% just a few weeks ago, now down to 4.6%. It's a long-winded way of saying this. Thank you. Thank you, 40 million Californians. Thank you to the people of the state of California for, for being mindful that this pandemic is not behind us, that as we battle this Delta variant and this mutation, which now represents 98% of the genomic tests uh, that we are conducting, that we still have work to do. And so I want to encourage everybody in that spirit uh, but with gratitude in my heart, gratitude to all of you that have done the right thing, got that first dose. I want to remind you to get that second dose, which is critical. And then those uh, that need to avail themselves, immune compromise uh, to that booster shot, know that California is setting up uh, the protocols and processes to make that seamless as possible with more sites uh, avail uh, to individuals than at any other time in the history of this pandemic. I'll end just with two final words. Uh, we're continuing to battle two large-scale wildfires in the state. We have 15 large active wildfires, two notable fires. The Dixie Fire, which is 807,000 acres burned in Northern California, about 46 percent uh, now contained. Progress being made on the second largest active fire in California's history, the Dixie. But the fire that's generating most consternation right now, a lot of stress understandably so, uh, and is now precipitated in evacuations, mandatory evacua evacuations in the South Lake Tahoe area, uh, is the Calder Fire. I've been up a number of occasions, be back there tomorrow. Uh, we continue to battle that fire, uh, about 192,000 acres, 16 percent contained, but we are making some progress, and I just want to thank uh, all of the extraordinary work that is being done. Uh, by 14,000 active personnel, dozer, hand crews, uh, folks on the line, firefighters from all over the country, the mutual aid system alive and well, not just state, but federal partners, as well as local partners that are battling these active wildfires. Still a lot of work to do, uh, but I just want to thank the men and women up there in uniform that are doing heroic work uh, and battling that Calder fire every single day as they have been for now a number of weeks. So with that, we're of course here happy to answer any questions. Hey, Governor Greg Lee from KTVU. Thanks for taking our questions. A um, couple for you. Number one, obviously we've talked about a number of the vaccine standards and requirements the state has put in place. Are there thoughts to expand that to any other sectors and what are they? And just to follow up to your comments uh, about the Caldor fire, 
Obviously, a lot of people who have evacuated South Lake Tahoe and the surrounding areas are anxiously watching this firefight. What would be your direct message to them as they watch? It's the number one priority in the state. It's our number one priority. We're putting everything we've got on it. You'll see DC-10s taking off and landing from nearby air bases, putting down that red retardant. I was up there at the fire a couple days ago, and uh, you saw clockwork. Dozens of helicopters uh, coming in and pulling water out of the reservoirs, dumping actively these, uh, these, uh, these helicopters, the helitac crews, uh, actively trying to suppress this fire. The hand crews out there. We've got National Guardsmen out there, conservation crew folks out there. CDCR has folks out there. So we're putting everything we can on this, federal partners. The president's been just magnificent. Uh, the major disaster declaration that we requested within 24 hours was signed off on to provide disaster assistance to individuals and businesses across the spectrum uh, with all of these active fires across the state. So all I can say is uh, we're doing everything in our power to have your back. That said, I was up there at Grizzly Flats, another community wiped off the map. It's just a reminder that traditions, histories, memories, it's not just about greenhouse gas emissions, it's about a pollution blanket that we put into the atmosphere over the course of the last century in this country. And we've got to recognize that we are experiencing extremes, extreme weather conditions that are precipitating uh, these fires and creating fire conditions the likes of which we've never seen in our lifetimes. And so we'll deal situationally as we do here in California to suppress these wildfires, but we have to deal with the sustainable responsibility to continue to lead on climate change. And that is our resolve and commitment, a backseat to no one in this country in terms of our commitment to radically change the ways we produce and consume energy in our state. Governor uh, Carla Marinucci from Politico. Um, Gov uh, California Democrats postponed their legislative push uh, requiring people to prove they're fully vaccinated and to get workers to get the shots. Republicans are already saying they're going to oppose it. Um, did, did you and your st or anybody in your staff weigh in on that? Did you let them know how you felt about that? And I have a follow-up question on a separate topic. I'll wait till you finish that. Yeah, we actively engaged. I mean, Buffy Wicks is uh, a real partner and uh, supporter of our efforts, and, and we've been actively engaged uh, to see what's possible. Uh, but they've decided to shelve the bill for the moment, uh, and we'll continue to be mindful about changing conditions. Uh, you've been reading about a new mutation, C12, uh, now out of South Africa. It's another reminder of the imperative to get vaccinated if you haven't gotten vaccinated so we don't deal with an, another strain, another mutation that sets back our efforts. We'll continue to work with the private sector, continue to work with local government uh, that are leading by example, Mayor Schaaf being a perfect prime example of that, and Supervisor being an incredible supporter at the county level here in Alameda. Uh, but we'll continue to, previous question and that question, be open to argument and uh, continue to process things, and not just with legislature, uh, but also through the authorities that are vested in me under the emergency authority uh, as governor. And, and governor, on, on a separate topic, uh, I apologize, but uh, last week the California Parole Board approved um, the parole for Sirhan Sirhan. Uh, can we get your thoughts on that decision? And you're the final call on that. How are you leaning? Well, that, they, haven't, they haven't formalized the approval, so I have to be cautious. Uh, at peril of nullifying the process. Uh, there were two members, it goes to the full board. Uh, so I won't opine on Two hundred times, that uh, we'll consider all options as things take shape. Now, 
some folks run with Newsom's considering this or that, and I caution you not to do that. Um, the fact that we led just a few weeks ago with the first statewide mandate for all state employees, and it has an implementation period, is a demonstrable example of our willingness to lean in. The fact that we led the first state mandate for all healthcare workers in our state uh, to have mandated vaccine is another example. The fact that we did the same in our public schools, not just for teachers, but for all our paraprofessionals, um, is yet a third. Uh, we continue on as things change, as the mutations change, as sequencing uh, directs us in different ways, uh, then we'll consider subsequent actions. But right now, we want to see what we have put up, uh, implemented, and applied. We support local government's efforts to go even further. We create a floor. Uh, and we continue through technical supports to encourage uh, local districts as well as local cities and counties uh, to consider additional actions. And we're very proud of the work that's being done at that local level. Morning, Governor. Matt Bigler, KCBS. Do you want to comment about the two bills that are headed to your desk about housing? I believe it's described as uh, light density housing. Can you tell us how you feel about that? Well, there are about a thousand bills that are pending coming down to my Yes, I remember Governor Brown always off, often punting on those questions. I always got frustrated. I imagine you get frustrated uh, when a governor doesn't announce details of what he or she tends to do a month in advance of doing so. But I'm also mindful uh, that uh, when you have a thousand bills pending, you want to take the time, reflect on those bills, read them in detail, see what final amendments were made uh, in the last hours uh, of the deliberation. Uh, but I'm very aware of those two referencing Governor Newsom, hi, it's Scott Wilson from The Washington Post. Thanks very much for doing this. I know this isn't a campaign event, but we are in the middle of a campaign. And uh, from today, I think, is the deadline. Uh, people right. are voting already. Um, I wanted to get a... Uh, Vote. Well, I've been in every part of the state actively for the last six, seven months, uh, where we haven't been back on multiple occasions, north to south. And Northern California doesn't end here in the Bay Area. I mean, play. Uh, I mean, down at the border, Imperial, Riverside, San Diego County. So we're continuing to be active. I continue to be um, um, very engaged in focusing on our fire suppression efforts, pre preparation efforts, our efforts here to increase vaccinations. Uh, I don't think it's any surprise that we have among the lowest positivity rates in America as we have the highest, among the highest vaccination rates in America. Uh, and I think that's demonstrative program. We want more work to do in that space. Yes, you are right. In the next two weeks, uh, there is an election, but the election, as you suggest, is today. The election's today, tomorrow, throughout this week, the last day of the election is September 14th. I want to encourage everybody that's watching, uh, take advantage of the fact that it's an all mail-in ballot. Uh, that ballot is landing on your desk. Simple request, vote no, and go to the mailbox. Simple, no vote, don't in, turn the page, consider the other 46 questions that are being asked. Simple no vote, turn that ballot in, and I'm very encouraged to your question about some of the early voting. Uh, people are uh, very active, very participatory in this election, and uh, we're seeing uh, that gap in terms of knowledge of what is at stake uh, closed very, very rapidly, and I'm very encouraged by that. Uh, we have a GOT effort that's simply without precedent in California history. Uh, we have tens of thousands of active volunteers. Uh, I'm just humbled by that and grateful 
uh, by the enthusiastic engagement, people phone texting, phone banking, knocking on doors, an unprecedented level uh, in California. And we're just winding up this last two weeks. So we're going to bring this home. We're working hard. I want to encourage everybody, vote no on this Republican back recall for no other reason than this. And I want to make this as clear as I possibly can. There's nothing more consequential than the issue that brought me here today, 14th. The starkest contrast between myself and all of the folks on the other side that all supported Trump and support Trumpism is their support to end the mask mandate and to end the vaccine requirements, quote unquote, before their first cup of tea. The leading candidate, Larry Elder, wants to end mask requirements and vaccine requirements before his first cup of tea. His model is Texas and Florida and Mississippi. And I hope people pause and just consider the life and death consequences of that decision. We have among the lowest positivity rates in America. They have the highest positivity rates in America. We have one of the lowest case rates in America. They have among the highest case rates in America. Their hospitalizations are off the charts. Our hospitalizations are plateauing. There is no more consequential decision to the health and safety of the people of the state of California than voting no on this Republican-backed recall. With that in mind, I want to thank everybody for the opportunity and privilege to be here. But no one more gratitude needs to be expressed than Jane and her remarkable team and all the great volunteers uh, that are here and all the young folks here that are getting vaccinated. Congratulations on getting you vaccinated. And he's too young, but he's going to get there eventually. I want to thank everybody for the privilege and opportunity to be here. Take care.